Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, it was uh, YouTube that was didn't want to start the stream <laughs> for some reason. Uh, tell me if you can hear me okay. Because as I said, I've been working real hard to get a new setting all around for my, uh, whatchamacallit, table stuff. That's why there's still a whole bunch of mess. So let me know if you can see me okay. Uh, not see me hear me because I can see what you're seeing <laughs> uh, so today we are going to do some insect eyes um, in that cycle of uh, doing organic beads um, and uh, last Sunday we did um, scarabs and other things and I showed you how to do those are called elytrae um, we didn't do yet anything about dragonfly wings or butterfly wings. I hope to be able to s sit on a chair long enough to maybe touch those as well. But uh, to start with, I wanted to show you how to do insect eyes. And for that, give me just a second. Let me bring up a few insect eyes. As I said, I'm still all reorganizing and rearranging. I hope to be able to thank you. And I didn't say hi, so let me go back a little bit and say hi. So, hi, Kilburn's Creations. I don't know your name. <laughs> hi, Darlene. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Cherry. Hi, Leah. Margie, Judy, Chris, uh, Katie, and Julia and Cecile. So, let me grab some uh, insect eyes. And take a look at, at them. So we can, you can figure out what I'm trying to obtain here. Uh, let me switch to exactly that so uh, I looked for a close-up of insect eyes and the ones that are the most uh, interesting would be pretty much butterflies uh, some dragonfly eyes even the regular house flies and uh, what do you see um, generally speaking what can be easily noted that all these uh, pretty much look like some type of bubble cane right remember the bubble and the lace cane and they look pretty much like that and there are several ways that you can um, do this effect some of them would be much harder to realize some of the no, some of them are easier and I will try to show you all of them see like this one it looks like it would be harder to realize but actually it isn't the thing is when you start working on things like this what you must avoid is the trap of thinking only one way because for example see i talked about uh this looks like a cane right just don't get stuck in the idea that an insect eye can be only realized by using a cane and what i'm going to try and show you is how you can make all these beautiful insect eye like um, beads because as beads they look absolutely fabulous um, using several different techniques some of them are more complicated some of them are uh, less complicated and how you can uh, go ahead and 
do all that. Let me get back on my. Uh, do all that without um, getting stuck in just one way of doing it. And first, I'm going to start with a cane. So, who's. Hi, Laos the Handle. Hi, June. Hi, Ermi. Hi, Robin. So, um, you can do the cane one just as a simple bubble cane, and I'll show you two different variants. And I got, I'm going to work primordially with Primo because it's the most readily available, and uh, you don't need to. How it doesn't need a lot of hass hassle to condition and all that. So, for the first type of cane, I'm going to go for the one that uh, gives um, iridescence, but with a transparent slash translucent middle, so that uh, imagine that you have like a bazillion, this is an old chime pipe, okay? Imagine that you have like a bazillion of these, but on the inside, they would be just filled with trans something transparent, but on the inside, uh, they would be, and I think this one is filled with dirt, <laughs> Because I gathered them from one of the last storms, it just ripped through my chimes. Uh, it would be on the inside, covered with some type of iridescent paint or, you know, clay or whatever. Why I have these is because one of the easiest way to achieve that is hi Christy is to use uh, paint. The problem here is though that if you use paint uh, when you start reducing the cane, that paint will pretty, pretty much, because you have to wait until it's dry, right? And that paint will pretty much start cracking. Now I know I didn't do yet a series on uh, the cracking technique with all kinds of cracking textures and how you can obtain that and yes it is in the plan to do that but I did uh, you know sometimes touch upon that and I said that one of the ways to do that is to simply use uh, paint over raw clay and then let it dry and then simply start you know pulling on the clay and it will do some these very pretty uh, fine cracks but at the same time I said be careful when you use uh, you have to use the cheapest acrylic paints don't use the more complicated ones like the for example the uh, silks glazes or the any of the art alchemy acrylics or even the Viva Decor Maya Gold and why is that? Because, and there are a few more, of course, but these are the most common on the market. But, and why is that? Because these acrylic, they have, um, I don't know how to call it otherwise, a glue component. And that type of glue component uh, gives them a lot of elasticity. So the moment you apply any of these type of brands of acrylics over raw clay and let wait for it to dry, hi Kim, hi Anna, uh, when you start uh, pulling to crack the acrylic paint, it will not crack. And if you keep pulling and pulling at one point, it will just start peeling off. On the other hand, that is exactly the thing that we need in order to create this illusion of something that is hollow inside, but uh, it is wrapped in iridescent -y, pearlescent -y stuff. And uh, obviously, and I'm not going to hide to you, um, 
It will look way better if you use a uh, Cernit translucent or Pardo translucent, much better than it will look with Primo. <coughs> Excuse me. Nevertheless, I'm going to do it with Primo so you can see how to achieve this. And I'm going to kind of work in a parallel uh, for a little bit just because uh, this one that requires the acrylic also requires the acrylic to be dry. So we're going to create the first, uh, first the cane for this one and we are going to cover it up with acrylic. Then put it aside to wait for it to dry and then go ahead and create the second type of cane. So for the first type of cane, obviously, let me just get it through the pasta machine once. Oh well, twice. Okay, I hope that wasn't too loud. Thank you. You can find these and I showed on uh, Facebook that uh, this is a... Uh, a brand of nail polish that I absolutely fell in love with. It's called um, Color Club and they have normal nail polish colors and it's plain nail polish. It's not UV gel. Uh, they have this collection that's called Holographic Hues. This one particularly it's called Harp On It. And I showed on Facebook how the Blue Heaven looks like. But I'm in love with them not just because of how they look but they also wear exceptionally well i did my nails uh, thursday and you can see there is a little bit of wear here but they still look pretty good okay so i'm going to first make a roll and your main danger when you do the translucent is not to, you know that, not to trap air because if you trap air, you're going to have placking or how the art doll sculptors call it, you're going to have mooning. And it's not about showing your derriere, it's just about the fact that they look like little you know, half moons. So, that's fine. I hope I won't be looking for too much stuff around <laughs> as I moved things left and right. But, uh, you know how I always use my acrylic block to make sure that my cylinder is okay. And I'm going to do actually all these three colors just to so we can see the difference and I'm going to go fairly small with them and unfortunately I had Connor. Connor sometimes comes and plays with the stuff if I forget the door open when I go to bed to the studio he will come and he will have he loves polymer clay for some reason i don't know he likes the smell he likes i have no idea what he likes about it but uh, he would come and he would get on my table and play with whatever i've been working on and of course he would leave a lot of hairs because hey he's a long-haired cat that's his prerogative so I'm going to go relatively small, but not too small, because I will still want to wrap this in another piece of clay. So I, we have one. Let me make another one, because as I said, I want to try all three of these acrylic paints to show you. Yeah, Kim, you can find if you go in my Amazon influencer store, there's actually a, a list that I made because a lot of lady were, ladies were asking me what is the nail polish that I use and I put in that list all the colors that I used and that I'm very happy with. And just as a <coughs> excuse me, piece of information, I usually don't buy expensive nail polish. Even if it is expensive, I would wait until it goes on sale and then I get it. 
always when you do this you want to check the ends because they will have the tendency the edges will have the tendency to come out and the middle is hollow so they'll start at one point they'll start splitting so always check your ends okay a second one and let's do a third one real quick <clears throat> and it's very very high allergy right now in my area i am glad that the storm passed through real quick earlier because yesterday they still didn't know exactly what would be the timing of the thunderstorms. They only knew that it would be severe. And it was. When I woke up this morning, there was, it was a little bit before 6 o'clock a.m. And I could see on the radar one tornado warning in Kansas and two tornado warnings in Arkansas. So, yeah. But fortunately, by the time it got here, it was mainly rain and thunder. There were a few wind gusts, but not too bad. Okay, let's try and make them about equal. And then I will place them on a... Uh, wax piece of wax paper and then I'm going to paint them And of course, the wax paper is so I don't make a mess. Hi, Marilyn. How are you doing today? All right, now let's grab a paintbrush. Uh, the thing with all of these that I can tell you whenever you try to use these paints, you have to be uh, aware of the fact that they all need uh, and the same is for the color shift and most of the paints that have this type of iridescence no my 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 thing is not balanced I'll have to figure out what's going on here <coughs> excuse me but uh, okay if I can open them but they all need to be very, very well uh, stirred because all that pretty stuff has the tendency to sit on the bottom. And if you don't stir it really good, all you're going to get is a very washed out paint. And you don't want that. And you can actually see the how, what a difference it is when I start grabbing the one on the bottom. But simply use a toothpick and make sure that it is really, really, really well stirred. To be sure that you got all the prettiness of it. And the other good thing is that when you apply it on raw clay and then you put raw clay on top of it. Hi, Margie. Uh, you can be sure that that raw clay will definitely uh, stick to the acrylic paint. It will not try to separate and you won't have to use bacon bond or liquid clay. So... And you can see it's not very thick as it is. The um, silks glazes 
are not thick, they are fairly transparent. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't know if you remember, but I made a pair of earrings using the silks glazes. I call them dragon claws. And the silk glazes give absolutely beautiful effects on uh, already baked clay. And again, they are glazes, so you don't really need to seal them up or anything. You can put the piece back in the oven for a little bit if you want. Bonsoir, Nelly. Comment ça va? So, for the glaze, I am going to wrap it. I'm going to put a second coat here. But then I'm going to wrap it in peacock pearl. Probably with a touch of green. But what we want here, and I forgot to bring me a glass of water for the for cleaning the paintbrush, just a second. I swear, if I ever manage to to move closer to the, because I want to move closer to the OU Medical Center, if I ever manage to do that in the new house, I would absolutely want to have a, a sink in my studio so I don't have to go back and forth in the kitchen. Okay, the second one, we're going to use the sparks, and you'll see the big difference between the these. Oui, ça va. Assez bien. And you can see how the sparks is a very, very mica-ish or whatever they are using. Loaded paint. And each of them will give you a different effect in your cane. But again, all of them, because you can see how it mixes and you can figure out how much more washed out the top is. And even if I would have wanted to have these prepared before the live, it, I would still have had to. <laughs> stir them really 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 good and the popsicle sticks are really good for stirring as well i usually get my popsicle sticks from uh, the dollar tree because you get like 50 of them for a dollar see how a lot of build up because there's so much stuff on the bottom Maybe I should start, you know, shaking my paints every day. <laughs> so this wouldn't happen. Anyway. And we have quite a bit of difference. You don't want to go too thick. If needed, you can apply two coats. Yes, I do talk to my clay, I talk to my computer, I talk to a lot of things, including my pets and myself. If you follow my Facebook page, I had a meme posted a while ago that said, yeah, I talk to myself, I always need expert advice. So, yeah. And 
no, I'm gonna be again accused of being conceited. Oh well. Okay, and now let's get the third one. Yeah, but you have no idea how many paints I have. <laughs> that would be a lot of work. And pretty much all of these with glues will do some kind of film on top, skin. And uh, it's very, very, I don't know if you can see, noticeable with the Maya gold, you can see how much it's on the bottom. And that's why you have to always be careful. I don't throw those little cartons because they provide a, even more um, insulation against air getting in and drying up your paints. Yeah, you know, I was thinking this morning, because, you know, there's been quite a bit of, uh, I'm not going to call it war, but quite a bit of nastiness going around. And the uh, you know, funny part is that when the whole thing started, before people actually started to read my side and saw that things were not exactly the way that seemed they seemed to be in the beginning, and the people who used to come on my Facebook page and send me all kinds of nasty messages because I had dared to accuse their idol of doing this or that. After that, you know, they would come and they would be like, oh, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And then they would be like, can you help me? Can you tell me this? And I'm like, dude, I feel like a fire hydrant near a dog pound you know it's like when you need me you know where I am but when you don't you get my hint and you see that the Maya gold is actually way more concentrated and there are some other acrylics that are more concentrated and generally with the Maya gold you don't need a second coat with the other two you kind of do if you want a very strong uh, a reflection thank you Daris well at least you were able to be here longer than usual I know you got a whole bunch of stuff to do. And taking care of your mom is not that easy. But uh, again, don't go too thick. Try to skip ahead, just not to have to wait because uh, it's not gonna be good. You're going to get gloopiness and that gloopiness is going to bubble when you bake and you're going to get some nasty little ear pockets in your beads. Alrighty. Yeah, no, but it's the, the thing is that, you know, when they didn't need me, I was, you know what? But then when the need arose, because obviously their idol is not the kind to give a lot of information for free without pay. Yes, yes. Every, all acrylics that are water-based, they can be, this, if they get too thick, you can put some water in and then uh, fix them because... Uh, but this one, I suggest, especially if you are in uh, acrylic pouring or in resin art, I suggest that you visit her store. I am in no way affiliated with her whatsoever. It's uh, color, colorart.com. But she's got a lot of beautiful colors 
for all kinds of uses. The only thing that I find uh, a little bit irritating is that she only has a short series of colors. If you like a color and you don't get it when she's getting up out, when she's putting it out for sale, uh, the chances for you to find it again later are minimal. So that's my only problem. But otherwise, all her colors are, all her paints and other coloring mediums she has are absolutely fabulous. And she does a lot of uh, acrylic pouring and, and stuff. Okay, now, the second type of cane that we can do and for this again you can get uh, all kinds of um, um, scrap clay that has pearlescent in it okay and I'll show because usually when I work with uh, pearlescents and metallics and with clay in general um, I kind of try to separate it by colors And then I just mix all of them. So I would get a whole bunch of different uh, metallic colors. Let's get this and some gold. Let me find the gold. If I can find it. This is antique gold. No, I don't want that. I had them these in order, but a while ago and then I'm going to grab some of my uh, scrap plates and why did I take this out? I don't know why I took this out I didn't mean to take it out So I got some copper and I got some, I think that's an 18 karat gold, not a gold gold. Okay, and see this is a scrap clay. Look how beautiful it is. Hi Joan, how are you doing? And I know that I had some greenish pearlescent stuff at one point. Is it this or was that another one? This is a little bit too pistachio. This is not pearlescent. Well, I thought that I had a green. Maybe I used it for something. This is also pretty. Oh well, we'll use these. Now, our main issue when trying to use the uh, pearlescent, oh, thank you, Hermi. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the problem when you use uh, metallics or pearlescents in a cane is that, generally speaking, what will happen is that as you keep working the cane, those mica particles are going to align themselves like this. So whenever you cut, you're going to cut on the dull side. So that's not going to do a lot of nice effect. Now, what can you do to avoid that happening? And let's create a little bit. Remember that I have a uh, tutorial out there that's with mica shift canes where I touch this subject on how to prepare your elements of a cane when you try to work with a um, mica shift with a mica pearlescent metallic clay and how to work with that and avoid 
or use that uh, dull side appearing to your advantage. So I'm going to get all these three colors. And I'm going to do real quick a gradient. I really need to stop saying Skinner Blend because most of the time I do not use the Skinner Blend technique, as you know. So, uh, in about five minutes I need to go get my uh, eye drops in and the pen peel. So if somebody can remind me, because you know how I get caught in what I'm doing and I forget. So what I actually need is this to be the main. And this is very hard to describe. The camera shifts it a little bit. It's kind of like a avocado-ish gold it's a little bit similar to the green gold of the cernit metallics but it's not exactly like that and this one if i remember right i got it i was working with white pearl gold and green pearl uh, this one is very bronze and this one, I know that I was working with bronze, gold, and uh, graphite, and black. And this one is kind of a tannish silver. And it has gold, uh, silver, white pearl, and a pinch of magenta. So what I'm going to do is... get this here and then get this here because I don't want to have too much of the colors going into each other and you'll see why so I cannot as of yet I ordered another um, of these um, uh, camera mounts so I can put the older camera right here to my left because what I did, let me try and explain what I did. I got a new little table and a new microphone and I hope you can notice that the sound is way better than it used to be. Hi Tia Lisa, hi Clara Lee. Yeah, it is a little bit sage, but it's a little bit more grayish goldish than sage. So what I did before I used to have my pasta machines here and in that corner there was the UV light and I was working way more on that direction on the table. Hi Tony, welcome. Uh, so anytime I had to use the pasta machine I had to either stretch all the way there or get up from the chair and get work on the pasta machines and that's if you remember that's when I would just turn around the camera and go there now I got this little table and now I have my pasta machines here so I don't have to get up all I have to do is simply turn to the right left and do everything that I need and what I need to do because remember I still have the old camera uh, I ordered another one of these that's going to be here and facing the pasta machine and anytime I need to show you how I do a specific gradient all I have to do is to simply switch to that camera but I'm still in the process of moving and organizing and all this well what can I say I hope to see you from now on and I know that you have a whole lot of videos of mine to watch but uh, as a general idea I don't know if you're a beginner or not but I have organized if you go on my channel and you look at the playlist tab 
I tried to organize my videos as much as possible because right now they are nearing 600 so it's kind of hard to find something that's why I try to organize them in uh, playlists for different subjects okay so I'm going to go ahead and do this gradient you know what I'm gonna move the microphone that way so it doesn't you don't get all the noise and then bring it back when I have to talk again Okay, so I got my gradient and now of course I want to extend it like this. Okay, okay, thank you. Just uh, give me two minutes. I'm gonna go get my drops and take my film. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> um, you're talking about the bubbles? No, it is there, but it is called... Hold on a second. I'll tell you how it is called. It's dewdrops and... What the heck was the other one? It's dewdrops and something. Soap bubbles. Now that I'm here, I can just... Uh, send you the whole thing. not you drops and lollipops i know it rhymes but it's not that give me just a second dew drops and air bubbles and it's in two part one and part two look on the list go down on the list and it's uh the one from june 8 2018 so it is on the old sponsor lives Actually, the name of the menu is Past Sponsor Live Events. Okay. Hi, Jenny. Okay. So, yeah, Tony, you get a... Uh, there's a, there are two playlists, one with beginner techniques and the other one with uh, basic canes. 
Okay, so I'm going to extend this. Let me get back on my... I'm going to extend this to make it much longer. So I'm going to go, never go all the way to the edge when you have something like this. Bring it pretty much where you can get some uh, straight line in it. And this one is a little too short. Let me grab the other one. So yeah, Cecile, when you click on the menu, it's going to bring you the whole, I don't know, they're like, 80 now I think and just scroll down the list and look for dew drops and air bubbles so I'm gonna go for one inch and then this one here too and then you simply get the ones that have a messed up edge and put the non messed up edge just be careful that it matches your gradient here and then get the other one on the other side also with the straight edge here because you might have one you might have uh, you might have two segments you might have three you might have four thank you that's good that's what i've been striving for and I just went, you know, little by little getting better stuff as I was able to afford it. And now I'm finally at the pretty much best that I can afford. Because I personally think that if I would get something higher than that, it would be just for the sake of getting a brand. And I've never been into, oh my God, look at me what I got. I have a Chanel now. But, and especially because in some cases you're just paying for the brand name you don't pay for anything better than this and with my health I don't see myself doing anything super professional anytime soon so okay so I got this and you can see it looks gorgeous so let me get it into a long thin strip I didn't get it super thin, but I'm going to do one of my half round plug, half fan fold things. Uh, I did that, I think I showed you that in the pumpkin cane. So I'm going to first start something that looks like a fan fold. And I'm going to do the same here. and make sure that I do the same size but see I'm doing only two or three times this let's see where's the middle so this would be the middle pretty much and I'm going to grab a toothpick and mark my middle. going to type start kind of spir spiraling it away make sure that you don't let it let the two sides stick to each other because you'll have to separate them And 
and you want these to be on the opposite sides so you should get something like this pretty much no not yet i'm going to come with the i'm going to make an update a video soon they didn't answer to me anymore they didn't answer to my friend anymore or anything no except for the mention that oh all we can do is to send you the broken part and kind of implying that they will only do that after I contact the some carrier that I've never heard of. Yeah, but see, unfortunately, I'm not the one who had paid for it. It's my friend, and my friend is not very confrontational. If it were me, it would be different. All I can do is to just warn people about them. Uh, there was a reason why I stayed away. I never wanted to buy anything from them. Because I've had experiences like that before. What did I do? There it is. Okay. And now I'm going to do another little bit of weird thing for this. Thank you. That is good, because that's the whole... That's the whole idea why I have the channel up. To inspire people to go ahead with their dreams. Now I know I had peacocks somewhere here. There you go. I'm going to get some peacock and mix it with a little bit of gold and then wrap the whole thing with the mix. And this should, shouldn't take too long. okay this is pretty much but the thing is that i don't want to actually wrap it like this i need to do it in two so i need to get it a, again narrow and then the width has to be half the width half the circumference of this hi Bennett. faster and I've shown before if you want to hurry up your gradient if you want to hurry up your gradient you roll it because remember when you do the gradient the fact that you fold it's going to uh, thank you Hermie uh, it's going to blend your things but when you roll you're gonna have so many folds that it's going to make the whole thing way faster so simply roll it and then flatten it. Mm. 
and not only that, but rolling, you can also uh, narrow it down again. This should work perfectly. So I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to place the blue on the darker side and the gold on the lighter side. And at this point you'd think, oh my, we're gonna have so much dark uh, side of the mica shift and it will... Yes, I did, Burnett. Um, but I'll show you it's a matter of knowing how to cut it pretty much so before I start reducing this let me check on these and get a second coat on the thin ones see how it's pretty much stuck because of all that glue like component and let's give it a second coat yeah sometimes it is I feel excellent and I was actually going to tell you all uh, because I know not everybody follows my Facebook um, it went excellent I can see beautifully with my right eye uh, Friday I had the post-op the one week post-op and the doctor said that my eye is healing awesome that it looks after a week like other people's look after a month so they are going to try and squeeze me in to do the left eye and because right now I'm a little bit you know with the right eye now I can see far I cannot see very well close but my vision is awesome but the left eye <clears throat> I can see only very close and remember that the left eye also has cataracts only it wasn't as bad as the one in the right so I have some issues with the uh, depth perception and because of that I'm in danger of falling and of dropping stuff and all that but uh, otherwise I'm good I cannot even wear my eyeglasses anymore even if they removed the right lens from them it does uh, make me too dizzy but hopefully once the left eye has is fixed too it's going to be much easier So yeah, let me uh, say, because we have, this time we have quite a, a number of ladies who are French speaking, let me say real quick what I did here. Uh, donc je vous montre deux façons de, de canne pour uh, imiter les yeux d'insectes. 
la première, c'est avec ça que j'ai commencé parce qu'on doit attendre pour la peinture de sécher. Euh, vous pouvez utiliser certaines euh, marques de, de peinture acrylique, pas les peintures acryliques normales, parce que les peintures acryliques normales, quand elles sèchent, euh, elles commencent à craquer si vous essayez de les élonguer. Mais, euh, par exemple, ces euh, trois euh, ont un component de colle dedans qui fait la peinture n'a pas craqué si vous voulez le, le faire. Yes, Bennett, they are trying to squeeze me into the left one. Parce que le premier effet qu'on veut obtenir est, est l'effet de quelque chose qui est transparent à l'intérieur, mais a beaucoup de euh, d'éclats tout autour. Et donc, quand vous, mouvez, vous faites mouver la, la canola, la perle, que ça c'est pour faire des perles, euh, vous allez obtenir des reflets intéressants. Okay, so I'm gonna let this as soon as I manage to close this. But yeah, it was a little bit difficult because the week after the surgery, I was not allowed to bend. I was not allowed to pick anything heavier than five pounds. So you can imagine that my kitties were not happy. And uh, also that... I had a whole bunch of stuff on my floor. There's actually two times that I bent and didn't catch myself in time. Because, you know, you're used to, you see a piece of something on the floor and you bend to lift it. That was one time and the second time I, <laughs> I succumbed to the temptations of rubbing Connor's fuzzy belly. You see, did he use steroids? Because with me, they uh, figured out that it, it was a combination of the sp steroid spine, spine shots I'm getting and the fact that I'm, I was using Flonase. Il n'y a pas de quoi, Nelly. Uh, D'habitude, je ne sais pas, uh, je ne parle pas le français uh, que lorsqu'il y a de, de plus d'une personne parlant le français dans le, le chat. Hi, Keldy. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, I had actually, I had a more complicated surgery when I was 19 on my left eye because I was born with uh, myopia, with nearsightedness on my left eye was inherited from my dad and there's something that's called the eye sympathy and my right eye started developing it too so my uh, eye bulb was getting very weak and elongated inside the skull and uh, unfortunately because of that the prognosis was not very good it was that by the age of 26 I would be blind so I they did to me what's called the scleroplasty. The sclera is all the white thing that encases the eye. So they placed a new one there to stop the eye from deteriorating. And it went pretty good because it stopped both eyes. And I went, it actually went better a little bit because I, I had before the surgery, it was minus nine on the left eye and minus six and a half on the right eye. And a year after the surgery, it was minus seven on the left eye and minus five on the right. So, yeah, I've had eye issues since I was a child.
So yeah, pinching your ends in a round cane is a good way. You're gonna lose all this, but it's a good way to avoid even more loss. So always, if you want to do a good enough reduction cutting and stacking, is uh, you want seven pieces. You want to be able to cut in, in seven equal pieces. One will go in the middle and the other six all around. So I know I have 14, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I have 14. So I'm going to go with two inch length pieces. And see how moving your acrylic block along makes it much easier to keep your whole round cane of a, a fairly even circumference or diameter, however you want to go with it. And remember, I need to cut these ends. Thank you. And I'm going to go two inches. The thing that you have to be very careful about when putting them together is to position them identically when it comes to this. So put them all with that blue facing the same way. Don't put one like this and then one like this. Make sure that they all go the same way. Even if they go around the one in the middle. And check on the other end as well. Oh, thank you, Christy. Yeah, I've been a little bit late end of May and June for my patron tutorials because I couldn't see and I, you've noticed I didn't post as much on YouTube either. And it's very hard to, and it wasn't so hard doing the tutorial, but as I show, I've shown in my latest monthly chat, it was editing the tutorials because unfortunately the software I'm using has very tiny, tiny fonts and there's no way of making them larger. Yes, it was two inch sections because this thing is 14 inch. And you see, I'm still keeping it in a hexagon because it's much easier to put it together. I showed you that in the lace cane. And you kind of want to keep it in a hexagon because remember all the uh, insect eyes I've shown you, they are fairly hexagonal. Okay, now I am sure that all of them are well stuck to each other, so I'm going to start reducing. 
And you don't have to go as tiny as the insect eyes, for goodness sakes, no. But I would suggest that you do two reductions. You saw that my um, first string was maybe one third of an inch, close to one centimeter. So if you go with that dimension, you should be good. And this one I'm going to go to seven inches only. I'm not going to go longer than that. Yeah, and you said that you don't have a C, Cecil, right? Yeah, the, the reduction takes the longest. and see how I'm get starting to get again the edges coming out. And I'm gonna let them do that until I can pinch them together. this much. See how my ends are a little bit thicker than the middles. So I'm going to insist on the ends first. Okay, this should be good. So this time I'm cutting it in one inch. And the same as before, I'm going to put them together paying a lot of attention on the direction. That is very, very important. What the heck, I did only six? No, I did seven. I just put that one <laughs> to the side. Oh well, I had a scare. Okay, so what is like this? And see how we have them all looking the same. And 
certain direction. And now you can go ahead and do, unless you want to go another one more reduction, you can go ahead and do it, round it up. Of course, you can go one more reduction again. Well, that's the idea. They are insect eyes. And we are trying to obtain that chatoyancy that they have. And we are getting close to it. And now I'll show you the trick with how not to get just the dull part and how to get the whole thing to have some shine and chatoyancy. Because remember, right now we have only the dull part of the pearlescence. And the secret is very, very simple. So let me first make some... Um, bead with some scrap clay so I can cover it with slices from this oh why would I try biofreeze for my hands I have Volteren for that osteoarthritis of the base of the thumb, but otherwise, Biofreeze is very expensive and it's got pretty much almost the same uh, ingredients as the cheaper arthritis stuff. Okay, so the secret is cut in a diagonal because the moment you cut in a diagonal okay I need to draw as usual I need to draw so the moment you cut in a diagonal you'll have oh let me hear you not you Because you have right now, we have the mica particles all aligned like this, right? So they would be like, by Tia Lisa, so they would be like, if we cut like this, we'll see only the dull side. So no matter how we move it, we won't get a lot of reflectivity or anything. But if we cut like this, then we will be able to see, if we move, we'll be able to see a little bit of the whole light effect that occurs in a, an insect's eye. Oops, of course I dropped my phone. Okay. I don't have problems with flexibility. On the contrary, I have super flexible hands. See, I have absolutely no problems with the flexibility. It's the control that I have problems with. Because my cervical spine is messed up. Okay, so... 
and you should be able even if i won't be able to show you the results until much later because for another week i have to avoid sanding and buffing so i'm going to actually cut it like this so you can see better it's easier for you to see than if i would cut like this And of course you can, uh, this one is super soft, so it's going to flatten a lot. I would suggest you put it in the fridge for a little bit before starting to cut. And because it's like this, you see how it flattened. So we need to go ahead and get it more on the round side and by simply doing this we are going to rearrange those little mica particles and you'll be able to see even when it's not um, baked yet but once you bake it and you sand it and you buff it it's one of those things that doesn't show up all its beauty until it's sanded and buffed and i'm going to even like this to let me try and refocus the camera so you can see the full effect of this And once it is all buffed, you will have all kinds of uh, flashes of light coming out of this. And as I said, you can go even smaller than this if you want to. Oh yeah, I had to do it a little bit bigger. It was, I shouldn't have. And again, you can use all the co other color combinations. It's up to you. And uh, if you want to have a perfect coverage of the bead, keep it hexagonal. It still pays to keep it hexagonal. And as I said, you can go smaller than this. And you'll still have a pretty effect. Let me refocus again. So you can see the... And of course, you can do the beads long and triangular. You can do a focal if you want but it's a beautiful organic effect and because it's done with metallics and pearlescence you will have flashes of light as well and see you'd you'd have thought that uh, that spiral i made will show it actually doesn't uh see, you can barely see any line there but what it does is in it enhances that uh uh, fl la flash of light effect on the bead. Hi, Lydia. Yeah. Yeah, no, they ideally we weren't making really insect eyes. We were making the insect eye effect for beads. So, now let's move 
because I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to be much longer on this chair so let's move it to at least one of these and I will finish the the other ones on uh, off camera and show you the results hopefully next Sunday when I'll be able to sand and buff again because as I was starting to say the doctor told me to not sand and buff for another week for fear that there might be tiny it's not an eyeball it's a bead darling um, for fear there might be tiny minuscule particles from sanding and from buffing that might float in the air and get into my eye and that's not something that we want okay so I'm going to grab some peacock fur and I'm going to do it uh, to get it through the pasta machine on a thin setting pretty much as thin as I can And then next Sunday I'll show you how to obtain uh, the insect eye effect with paint and in such a way that looking from one side it will look one color and looking from the other side it would look a different color. That's another cool effect as well. Okay. So this gets wrapped. And this is quite uh, messy, but uh, you'll see the effect is beautiful. And on this one, definitely you cannot see the full effect until it's baked. Yes, you'll have to, if your internet connection allows you to. Darlene's been having some internet connection issues. She lives out in the country and it's quite spotty. Okay, let me see. Six, I need one more inch. And on this one, obviously, we don't really need, I'm going to pinch the ends. We don't really need to pay attention to any kind of um, arrangement unless, and you can do that too, you can paint one side of the string with one color and the other half with a different color, but then you'll have to be careful when you assemble them like for the other one. So you can get the nice effect. Okay, I got the seven. And again, remember I said that if you use a uh, Cerny translucent or Pardo translucent, the effect will be stronger than using Primo because those are way more translucent clays. It will still be pretty with Primo, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's much prettier with one of those two. Thank you, Lydia. what cameras did you get yeah hopefully now with being able to see properly soon i'll get back on track and 
continue also the series for the for artists who want to create a YouTube channel uh, or want to show their art on YouTube. And again, I'm pinching my ends. And this effect, if you want to get it the prettiest, I suggest that you place it either on translucent, on a translucent bead, or on um, like white pearl. It doesn't look as good on uh, on scrap clay, this specific one. And of course, you can also uh, use white, but it looks better on translucent or on white pearl. You get more of that pretty effect. Oh, if you put it on scrap clay, it's going to just get washed out because, because it's a translucent cane. Remember, problems with depth perception. <laughs> But it will be probably unnoticeable at this point where we have the still the raw clay. But once you get your beads sanded and buffed or varnished, because you can of course varnish them, yes, you can look in my store on Amazon, uh, and I have actually two sections. One of them is for making videos, and the other one is for what I personally use. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know, they said they want to wait until both my eyes heal and then they'll decide if I will be able to get any more steroid shots. Because it's gonna be between a rock and a hard place for that and also for my allergies. Because pretty much without Flonase, I get uh, the openings of the facial sinuses get clogged. And I get facial sinus infections. It's like like a clock every, every spring and every fall. And without the steroid shots in my neck, it's... I mean, those, it's true, they only work half the time, but still, for the half the time they do work, I'd rather have them, you know? Okay. Hi, Janice. So, let's make a bead. And I'm going to show you another trick with this, because you can do it, you know, just simply cut a certain width of slice and go with it little by little. And I need to clean my hands, because I have a lot of paint on my hands. But there's another way where you can uh, uh, the one that I'm using right now because uh, I used until now the Logitech 922 this one is a Logitech 930E and I think I added it let me check and I'll 
do the link for you. So you have, yeah, I'm gonna have to go through my store again this afternoon to make sure that all the links are updated and I got the best prices. Okay, so you have first this list that is with, um, Give me just a second. A video tutorials, equipments. Let me add my last two things. Just a second. But you can use if you have a smartphone, that is really good as well. Give me just a second. Because I also have, uh, for the ones of you who vend at venues, I have venue vending uh, things. Where the heck is that list? And there you go, there's one here. There's one here, because I, I forgot to add the microphone. And the microphone holder that I'm using now. Okay. This microphone is, as I said, it's more on the expensive side. So... But generally speaking, when you want a good microphone, you want to look for two things to be in the title. One of them cardioid and the other one is condenser. Because those would be the microphones that don't pick up a lot of the surrounding uh, noise. Okay, and the uh, microphone stand. Yes. Okay, so this is what I personally use. Let me see if it allows me. No, I need to put the to bitly them. Hold on. YouTube doesn't let you put long links. Okay, so you have here what I use. And then general video tutorials equipment. And some of them I did use at one point or another. And I have some more stuff to add from one to the other, but I'm not going to waste the time right now. As I said, I need to go through my uh, Amazon store this afternoon to make sure everything is. Okay, so, and here you have the general for vi making videos. Bye, June. Thank you. Oh, yeah. My nail polish is... Hold on. I'll get you. It's right here. Because I got asked so many times by ladies what nail polishes I'm using that I added a section in the influencer store with my nail polishes. So this is the list with my nail polishes. And this specific one is the Harp On. 
harp on it. It's the sixth in the list. This specific color. Okay, let's go ahead and do the bead. So I can show you the trick. And here the trick is not about cutting. Here the trick is about flattening slash widening a little bit the slice. So as you cut your slice, of course you can cut, as I said, all your slices of the same dimension and simply cover the bead with them. But there's a trick here. If you want to give more, I painted something and I didn't <laughs> clean my acrylic. If you want to get a little bit more 3D effect, let me refocus the camera for this. Yeah, so this specific camera is a Logitech uh, 930. A C930. But the uh, C922s are also in the top 10 uh, cameras for making tutorials and stuff. Okay, can, can you see the little bits of pearlescently? So that when whenever the bead is all baked, they are going to f do flashes of light whenever the angle of view changes. But let me show you how you get an extra 3D effect. You didn't see it? Let me show you this and then I'll put it again, okay? Okay, so what you want to do is to, instead of going flat like this and more or less burnishing it, what you want to do is to go in one direction, slightly getting the lines on that cane a little bit diagonally. So you go like this and you go like this only once. You don't want to go more than once. If you still need to flatten, Again, you can do it between your two fingers. I'm going to move this finger this way and this finger this way. See? And that way, and now I can simply widen it up some more and even gently go in all directions. Let me refocus. Gently go in all directions and then cover my bead to it. But what happens once the bead is baked and sanded and, and this you'll have to be very careful because it might have the tendency to break apart. But once you start doing the bead between your palms it's going to be fine um, you will be able to see those edges of the walls of the cell going kind of like from underneath it's very hard to explain how they are going to look like so let me get another slice that I'm going to deform diagonally and then I'm going to simply widen it up a little bit. And on this you can play a little. You can make some of the slices uh, wider and leave some of them, I mean you can cut them thicker and then extend them some more. And you'll have this, uh, different effects and different depths on the same bead or if you're using this for a focal and I'll show you how to get rid, uh, get rid of all these little fractures here in a second. And you can leave the fractures if you want to do something gemstone-like. You can just leave the fractures. Now here I see I have a half. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just get a half of this deformed end. And I'm going to gently deform it, I mean diagonally push it and 
and then I'm going to flatten it like this and see now I have a lot of much larger cells but I, I think I enlarged it a little bit too much and I made it too thin Ugh. okay let's go do this again so I'm going to grab just half of it see how it's like wedged and I'm pushing it like this and then I'm going to gently elongate it and now I can cover this area here And if need be, of course, you can grab little other little pieces from your X canes, X ends of canes. And I need to see why the table is tilted. Might be something under one of the. But I only need this here because for things like this, you don't need to add anything. Simply push your slices. And then. Roll, 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 roll. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And see, now there, these are perfect. Let me refocus. And once they are, you can see a little bit of defect, like here. But once they are baked and sanded and buffed, you'll see all kinds of stuff underneath. I don't know, this is kind of like in between an insect eye or if you want, if you work with blues, all blues, uh, it will look like underwater something. Hi, Noemi, yes, we did. A little bit too stormy for my own personal taste. So yes, this uh, these are it. Where did I put the other one? I did something with it, what did I do with it? Oh, it's here. So this is it for now with the insect eye effects of four beads. And I will show you more stuff next Sunday. Uh, and we'll talk um, insect wings. So last time I, I uh, showed you the um, the elytra of the scarab but next time i'm going to show you how you can get wings wings like dragonflies and butterflies how you can get the effect of insect wings without having to do the whole cane because remember what i told you the the brain um puts together the image of something even if it only sees uh the You never try polish on clay, uh, even if you only see a few element of that object. Polish will attack clay in time. You have to think that you have polymer clay, polymer in the name of it. Polymer means plastic. You don't put, the same as you don't put acetone on plastic, you don't put nail polish on plastic because it's going to eat it up. You never use nail polish on polymer clay okay you don't need a knitting needle just as you as you just do this they are going to be perfectly as for uh, trying to do it for a pendant all you have to do is to burnish you just get your slices hold on let me refocus Come on. Let's say that you want to do a um, focal, right? So let me grab some. I'm going to do a cheating here. Actually, I have this old ugly cane that. It's not a cane, it's a mokumegane that I did that I wasn't impressed with. So I'm going to use this for a focal. So.
So let's say I'm going to make a focal. a bit on the edges. Well, this is just real fast to show you how you can get uh, to not have any issues with those cracks. Hi Elaine, everything okay? Because I know you're getting the storms we had here this morning. Yes, I'll, I'll bring some in a second. Because I made the whole set so we can do a necklace of scarabs. Okay, so we got this. And then if I want to cover it, okay. Oh, let me. Okay, I have some wax paper right here. So grab a few slices of your cane. Yes, and then place them one near the other and it's going to make a beautiful effect. Even if they overlap, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. And then grab another piece of wax paper. If it's only waxed on one side, make sure that your clay is between waxed surfaces. And then first use your finger to flatten. And always release the clay so because if it's stuck to the paper, it won't be able to move. So from time to time, you release it from the wax paper. And then you start elongated it, elongating it, and again release it. But those cracks happen only because you bend the clay. And also the other thing is that if you let the cane sit for a little bit, they will be bonding. Now it was just freshly made and that can happen sometimes. And by simply by this process of extending, thinning out, the veneer you won't have okay i got a little bit too thin there but i'm starting to hurt so nothing yet i'm gonna make an update video soon i'm starting to hurt so i'm gonna call it a day soon so see how now there's no crack let me refocus here What you see that looks like a crack is not a crack, is the paint that you can see from the side. It's not a crack. It's just a 3D effect. But it won't be, you won't be able to see it properly until it's fully baked and sanded and, and then you can go ahead and place it on your Focal, of course, it needs more extending, but pretty much this is what you get. And once it's baked and sanded and buffed, as you move like this, it's going to have different flashes of light and color. 
no, not yet. It's not straightened out, and I don't know if it's gonna be straightened out. So, anyway, as I said, I'll show you hopefully next time how this came out, baked and sanded and buffed, and we're gonna do the wings wings insect wings wings like butterflies and dragonflies and cicadas using elements that will bring to mind it will look like they are made out of wings but we'll all actually only use elements of those um wings so here we go with insect eyes effects for beads and focals oops and stuff and i'll see you next sunday and thank you so much for being here today. And I hope you have a great what's left of the weekend. And I'm so proud of myself. I've been out for two hours. Yay. <laughs> thank you so much, ladies. See you next Sunday. Mm, bye.